back everybody it is thursday what day is today today's september the 15th 2022 i am carrie platinum pussy anthony the ceo and um owner of iheartbbw.com and with me now i have december monroe hello young lady hi how are you i am wonderful it's been a really crazy day um but i'm gearing up to go to the 420 Expo in Edison, New Jersey tomorrow. So I'm taking a special trip to Edison early. Oh my God. It was exotica. I am so jealous. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> it, I'm a very, I'm a very lucky girl. I, I'll have to say I've worked really hard. So it's not like I just stumbled upon luck. Um, but it, yeah, I have to count my blessings and definitely appreciate the things that I do have. So anyways, if you guys are watching us for the first time, make sure you like follow subscribe. And, um, we are talking about the curvy BBW fashion show, which is exclusive to the exotica. Ooh, excuse me. The exotica expo, which takes place in Edison, New Jersey, October 21st to the 23rd. And the curvy BBW fashion show is a collective of beautiful ladies of various shapes sizes ethnicities like we are all over the place there's a little bit of something um a little bit of everything for for anyone so i'm really excited about that because you know it's really hard to find um a, div a diverse lineup of uh, models for these types of shows. Cause you know, there's a lot of young ladies out there that are like, Oh, I don't think I could get on stage. I have stage fright. Or I don't think I could be because you know, most of those girls are adult entertainers and I don't know if I'll fit in. And it's like, you don't have to be an adult entertainer. You don't have to be the most beautiful person on the world. You just have to get on stage and shine. It's that simple. Are you ready for the show December? I am. Um, this is my very first uh, anything like that. Um, it'll be my first Exotica, my first fashion show, anything like that. Um, so I have to admit, I do have a little bit of stage fright um, and apprehension, but I mean, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> I am so happy to hear that. But let me just give you a little bit of um, hopefully this will make you feel a little better. Okay. Almost everyone that's been in the fashion show has had that experience. And it's like once you get to the stage. And you get on the stage, you realize you're not going to fall. Nothing bad's going to happen. That mm -hmm. energy that's building up that I've been getting the, the, the audience ready for and um, Jordan, the MC and Jerry, the, the DJ who are awesome fucking people like they get the crowd really amped and then I get them even more hype and then you get on there and it's like it goes by so fast so fucking fast and you're gonna love it like i'm almost 99 sure you'll be addicted you'll be like oh my god i have to get on every stage every time <laughs> like that first anxiety once you get that out the way after mm -hmm. that you know because i used to i used to have stage fright and i struggled which is really weird because i've done radio i've been in the entertainment industry i've been in the adult entertainment industry and you could turn a camera on me and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, yeah, say all the right things. It looks good. It sounds good. It's beautiful. <laughs> but you put me in front of a live audience and I am good, but I'm not great. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I just have this like sense of anxiety and this like little bit of stage fright. Now, fast forward to 2022, I'm a fucking pro. Like, I'm like, give me the mic. I'm ready right? to get up there. Let's do this. So. I think you're going to get up there and hello, Matthew McKinley. I see you in the chat. Um, I think you're going to get up there and rock it. I just know it. I feel it. I feel Thank you're you. going to get that power, that, that star power and like just run the stage. So one of the questions that was asked um, through our blog was what is, what are the requirements to become a curvy BBW fashion model? So that's a really great question um, because I haven't really talked about what I look for when I'm selecting models for the fashion show. And I'll be honest, up until a couple of shows ago, I didn't I just picked whoever applied because there was no process. It was literally like, hey, want to be in the fashion show? Because mm -hmm. it happened overnight. It was literally like Exotica calls me two weeks before Miami. And they're like, hey, um, our BBW fashion show girl backed out and we need somebody to fill that space on the stage. Would you like to do it? And I was like, fuck yeah, sure anything <laughs> uh, you know i had no idea what i was gonna do 
I had no idea what we were going to showcase. And I had just started selling the Kixie thigh highs. So I was like, well, fuck it. I'll spend, you know, a couple thousand dollars on thigh highs and put everybody in them. And that's how the, that's how the fashion show was reborn. I had done the fashion show um, a few times prior over the course of the last 10 years. So it wasn't brand new, but it was a new concept because this time I realized the power of actually having something to present rather than just, hey, we got a bunch of fat girls on the stage. Everybody right. <laughs> so um, I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot about like organizing, but the question isn't about what I learned. The question is about the models that are watching. What am I looking for? I'm looking for group participation. This is a community. Oh, we've got Saucy Sapphire waiting in the waiting room. And after last week, I accidentally <laughs> left Rizzy in the waiting room, not realizing she was down there. Aww. And so I just wanted to publicly apologize for being here in a little bit. But anyway, so what I'm looking for are women who you don't have to be in the adult industry. You don't mm -hmm. have to be an experienced model. You don't have to be the next, you know, Lizzo. What you have to do is be ready to get on stage and rock that shit. You get a whole 30 seconds to a minute. It doesn't sound like a long time, but on stage, that's a long time. You get a whole 30 seconds to a minute to get up there and show the fucking crowd why you are a goddess, why you are a queen, why you are a star. And that energy that you give them, they're going to see you out on the floor and then they're going to be like, oh my God, when you did that car wheel, oh my God, when you did the splits, oh my God, when you did your booty twerking or whatever it is that you do when you get up there, because I encourage you to do something that like sets you aside from everyone else. They're going to be like chasing you down and wanting to like know who you are and how they can find you. And this is, this is the part when you're like, oh my God, I was on stage and people know me now. Like, so I said all that to say, you don't have to be experienced in anything. I just want women who are positive, who want to get up there and really show what being a BBW means, what being a curvy woman doesn't, you don't even have to be BBW, curvy woman, what it means. And we're, we're spreading body positivity. We're spreading size acceptance. And in our world, I don't shame anybody. If you want to be 99 pounds and get up on stage with us, fuck it. Get on, get on stage with us. Like, I'm not going to shame you. I love that. <laughs> we might pick you up. <laughs> Turn it into a stage mosh pit or some shit. But th there's no, there's no size shaming here. Like, you know, what it is, is acceptance of the women who are curvy, who do get a lot of shit from the, from the public and from society and from other women from men just in general like we get a lot of shit for being plus size and so this is just a space where we can feel comfortable being our natural curvy selves and not have to worry about someone being like oh my god she's fat because i'm gonna be like what what am i gonna say saucy i get paid by the pound bitch okay <laughs> welcome saucy hey honey how are you i'm good where's your blue hair it's here. I just oh, got okay. out of the shower, so it's a little oh, wet. Okay. Little... Hello, December. She just hopped on camera. I'm doing my makeup. Is that all right? Go ahead, girl. Do your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been, Saucy? How have you been? Oh, I'm wonderful, girl. I'm wonderful. Just gearing up these next few weeks. It's all about focus and preparation. Hello. Hey, Rizzy. What's up, Hi, Rizzy? Hey, y'all doing? <laughs> We are talking about, we're answering some questions that were submitted to us about the Curvy BBW Fashion Show, yeah. which ironically, everyone that's in this live right now is brand new. They've actually not been in the show yet. So they still have that anticipation, that excitement, that surprise, that effect that is like, oh my God, I haven't done it yet. I'm I know excited. you guys are excited. <laughs> mm -hmm. Rizzy I'm, Riz. I'm super excited. Yes, look at you. you. Got your sun setting in the background. I feel like it's we're like so we're on a date. Actually, hold on, wait. Let me show you. Oh, I can't flip the camera. Oh, it's gorgeous. I am so jealous that she lives by the beach, y'all. I'm, I'm such at, a beach whore. I'm leaving the bar. She works there, by the way, y'all. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make that known for anybody that's I'm like, like, damn. Yeah, right. Oh, hold on. It's eight o'clock, five o'clock somewhere, baby. It's eight o'clock. It's five o'clock in California. Our bar <laughs> opens. This bar opens at seven a.m. What the fuck? 
Yeah. I Tristan, forgot wow. where I was at and they had a 24 hour bar and I was like, who the fuck can be in here for 24 hours? And they were like, yo, there's sometimes they have to kick people out. Well, uh, you gotta think about it too. Like, it's very judgy or whatever, but like, some people are like third shift. Mm, so, like, yes. they get yes. off at like 6, 6 30. So, like, that's their happy hour, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Literally. Or then Especially we have when you like, work at a shitty job. Then we have those like retired military people that are used to getting up at like four o'clock in the morning. <gasps> oh, my dad. <laughs> my so dad's that's like the next Marine. So yeah, that's literally that's like coffee club in the morning. They like come in yeah. and take Irish coffees and then. Or or what's the one with the tomato juice? Um, oh, Bloody Mary. Bloody, Bloody Mary. Mary. Yes, or, that's or my ch- favorite. Or a chalada. What is a chalada? It is a beer with Bloody Mary mix. Oh. Mm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. I don't like beer, though, so it's not a thing for me. I like, if I drink beer, I like, um, what's it called? Um, God damn it. Corona. Oh, and I like it me. with a splash of grenadine, lime juice, and caraco. Oh, if that's okay. how you say it. I don't know if that's how you say it. Hey, oh, wow. what's up? Bravo needs bacon. Okay. I like so I need first... bacon. Right, right. <laughs> so the first question was about the things that I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone who has a positive attitude. I'm looking for someone who is a group supporter. Like this is a community of women who support each other. We don't do no drama. We don't do no negativity. So that definitely will get you either kicked out or never accepted in the first place. Like this isn't the place for that. Um, I'm looking for those that are excited about promoting the event, which thus far has not been a problem. And also um, ready to kill the stage. Not literally, like we're not going to kill it, kill it. But you know what I mean? We're going to rock this shit. I mean, it's Halloween, so we kind of are going to kill it, kill it. (laughs) I'm a huge Jason Voorhees fan for those that don't know. I am excited. Like, one of the shows that I'm doing in the future, um, actually around Halloween, is like, what is your favorite 80s slasher film? And of course, the three options are um, Michael Myers, which is um, Halloween, Freddy Krueger, which is Nightmare on Elm Street, and then Jason Voorhees, which is Friday the 13th. Did you say you're a Michael Myers fan? Yes. <laughs> I feel like those movies are mad boring. Like they can oh, be. I'm gonna, but... I'm gonna chase down the baby center. He doesn't talk. He doesn't. Do, well, neither does Jason. But at That's least true. Jason be catching him, getting it on. You know what I'm saying? That's From the true. beginning. I don't okay, know so I'm like. since huh? I like a small, strong, silent man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, December. Let him know, baby. <laughs> I like no weak men. You got to come with a strong back because I'm a oh big Oh my goodness. Snack. I can't do it. And then right. I, I, I love Freddie, but Freddie killed Johnny Depp and that pissed me off. So like I'm just <laughs> I'm just Jason all the way. Okay, so um I wasn't going to I wasn't going to say anything until after I finish it. But since you're such a Jason fan, I'll tell you. Uh one of my friends rented a cabin for me on the 25th and my homeboy that's 67 we're doing Jason X. So we've got a cabin, we've got the woods and I'm doing a slasher shoot. That's, so he's going to like Where is my invitation? When is I mean, happen? if you want to come on to Kentucky, honey, you know you are so welcome. I am not afraid to get on nobody's highway and go film <laughs> no slasher film. In fact, we filmed a, a horror movie here in Baltimore, um, 2014, 2015, and it won an award. It was just a short film. It was like eight or nine minutes. But the cool thing was um, everybody died by something that was cam house related. Like one of the girls got smothered with her own boobs and. One of the girls died by dildo. Uh, <laughs> one, of them, one of them got strangled with the Hitachi cord. Yo, this this shit is fucking epic. For an eight minute short, it's pretty fucking epic. And I'm ready to do a part two. So next year, if I get the things done um, this year and in the midst of next year, I would really love to like do a part two, but longer and like with more girls and like more creative. I'm so down in November. I'm going to North Carolina to do some horror stuff. And that's going to be my first acting. Um, That's going to be my first acting part. But I am like already ready. I'm so ready. So when you are down, girl, I'll be straight to Maryland. Yes. Yes. Hello, Danica Denali. I see you over there. Yes, we are live on YouTube. We're also live on Twitch. 
And I don't believe I put this on Facebook today because, you know, Facebook is just a little outdated. I might as well go live on MySpace. But anyways, one of the other questions um, that we received was, what does it take to be a BBW model? It doesn't take anything. A lot. I don't know, uh, I don't know about that. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I think a lot of people <laughs> overthink what it takes to be. Now, if you're talking about being in the adult entertainment, there are some things you need to be aware of. One, I, I highly, highly recommend doing your homework. One, when you put your face on the internet for whatever purpose, whether it's adult material, if it's just social media, whatever, that is a lasting impression. It's forever. Mm -hmm. It is forever. You can't go back and be like, please take my content off the internet. Like, it's just not going to happen. There's always going to be some sort of digital imprint. So when you're doing adult content, you really got to think about that's forever. You can't go back and erase it. So there's no control alt delete on adult entertainment. Like it's done and, you know, done and over. Like you just have to accept it. Um, one of the other things that I always tell everyone, make sure you, you let your peoples know, family, friends, whoever, you're going to be found. You can only hide for so mm -hmm. long, <laughs> especially when you're a marketing, you know, crazy person like me who goes out there. Hey, Johnny Bravo, especially when you're a crazy person like me, who's like a marketing genius. And I go out there and promote, 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 promote. And then you're like, oh, shit, people actually know who I am now. <laughs> and you're at Walmart and the guy that's dressed up as Santa doing the whole um, Salvation Army ding, 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 give us money thing is like, oh, my God, that's platinum pussy. And I'm just like regular schmegular walking into Walmart. Like I'm going to go get some tools and some nails and screws. Oh, you muted yourself. I'm like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Saucy. It's all good. But I was at Walmart and like he followed me into the Walmart and I'm looking at hardware and he's like, he walks back there and he's like, are you platinum pussy? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, not right now. I'm not. <laughs> I'm motherfucking regular schmegular Carrie right now. I don't, have, is Carrie. I don't have no makeup on. I don't even know if I brush my teeth. And no, I'm just kidding. But I'm just saying, like, I was not prepared. I forget. You know, I'm still, even 18 years later, I'm still humble. So it's like, I don't go around like, I'm motherfucking platinum. <laughs> Come and talk to me. I'm a porn star. Uh, uh, uh. Like, I'm over here like this. Like, you are so funny. I love you. Listen, uh, me and Paisley were talking the other night, and she says, she says, what's your sign? And I said, why? And she said, I just got to know. And I said, Aquarius. She said, what is it with that? That you and platinum? She said, because y'all come and you just have like, you know, you look like you don't really talk to nobody. You don't like nobody. You talk to you a couple times. All of a sudden, boom, all this energy. And I was like, girl, it's Aquarius's. It is. <laughs> that is literally us, it's for sure. It's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing and a fucking curse. Like, sometimes it's amazing. Like, right now, I'm at the... At the epicenter of amazing energy that I've been able to give to people through education, through coaching, through a matter of fact, I had a, a nice couple hours with Rizzy the other day and it's yes. great. But then there's times when you're like, yo, you just feel tapped the fuck out and you just want to be like, go away. Yep. I don't want to exist right now. I just want to watch fucking... <laughs> As a matter of fact, I had an epiphany. I was watching paranormal stuff on YouTube because I'm a paranormal freak. Like, I'm totally obsessed. I'm not going to go looking for that shit. Like, I don't want to go investigate, but I'll watch other people do it on, on the internet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm watching it today, and I'm like, you know why I watch this? Because I know, I know what to expect. Like, I don't have any emotions tied into this paranormal stuff. Like, it doesn't make me scared. It doesn't make me... Um, sad. It doesn't make me happy. It just keeps me content. Like it keeps me intrigued, but it keeps me content. There's no feeling exchange. And it made sense why I watch it. I watch it at times when I just need to decompress and I don't want to attach my emotions to anything. And that's, you know, that was a really interesting epiphany today. So anyways, paranormal porn stars. That's how I am with watching like just regular horror movies. Um, I don't want to be in it. I don't want to be murdered, but I definitely like to watch other people be murdered. <laughs> okay. that I want to watch people be murdered. I There's a couple like, people I would like to watch be murdered. 
Hmm? Mm. I said, there's a couple well, people I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, bite the ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't say that on here. We can't we can't talk about that on here. Well, 187. <laughs> 187. No, we can't we can't. I was like, like that like went that. dark real quick. Yeah, that yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna bring it back up to the questions, the QA. One of the questions was Listen, uh, now when they come and they're like saucy, now what did you hear? What did you hear Rizzo say? I'm like, I didn't hear nothing. Who the fuck is Rizzo? <laughs> That's my call. That, listen, Riz. Oh, that's just what I call her. No, I'm gonna say, who's Rizzy? Who me? Oh, who's Rizzy? Hello. <laughs> you are so late. You are so late to the party, Sazi. Who me? Yeah. Who me? Yeah. Who, we who is Rizzy? Listen, that's not even Rizzy. Personally, I know that's charisma. Yeah, it's not even a real name. <laughs> <laughs> Where I get all the fun, son. You know, somebody actually asked me. Is Platinum Pussy your real name? And I was like, oh my yeah. God. yeah, my mom oh. named me that. She was, you know, <laughs> my, mom, my mom just knew I was going to be a porn star before I was born. So she was like, you know what? Platinum Pussy. You know what? Right? This, this is what I would tell them. If my mom named me Platinum Pussy, I probably would have wanted to be a nun. Because, you know, Facts. anything that somebody puts on you, you always want to do the opposite. So being that she gave me some regular schmegular name. Well, my name actually has a story to it. So my dad insisted that they name me what they named me because he used to have a girlfriend with the same name. And as I got older, my mother told me the story. I was like, what the heck is wrong with you? Like, why would you even agree to that? And she's like, well, and I'm like, see, that's the submissive in you. I would have been like, are you kidding me? Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Hell I'll to the no. Listen, at the end of the day, that would have been a divorce. <laughs> We're getting divorced. The fact that you even suggested that shit. You are sleeping on the couch for a lifetime. Like <laughs> you have to sleep in the backyard, not even the garage, nothing with a roof. You have to sit out sleep outside with the like, nature. <laughs> with nature. With nature. Like the dog can take your space. Like that's <laughs> But yeah, so that was the, the thing behind my name. But so I told my mom, like, when we were talking about when I had to come out and share that I was doing the adult stuff. And, you know, my mom is a religious person. She's in the church. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what she <laughs> said. No, no doghouse. The doghouse is a structure that has a roof. You have to sleep outside in, under the stars, period. But yeah, so I'm having this conversation with my mom and I'm like, if you wanted me to be, if you didn't want me to be a porn star, you should have named me something like Electra, <laughs> Hypnotic, Diamond, <laughs> something crazy like that. And so my mom says, well, the truth be told, I wanted to name you Starlight. No, oh, no. no. Moon, what was, there's um, those kids, um, Moon something, Dweezel. And moon. They're driving real dumb with no lights on right now. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. What? I was like, what just happened? <laughs> Somebody is weaving in and out of traffic with no lights on right now. And I just, oh. I don't even understand. Oh, okay. I thought that was saucy. And like, I could yeah, hear the voice, but I didn't see her mouth move. So I was like confused. Like, what do you mean you're <laughs> real dumb with no lights on? And I'm like, it's the, it's the Italian rasp. It is. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. I'm yeah. Like, I'm so confused right now. But yeah. Anyway, so my mother should have named me Electra. I think that would have been a dope ass name. And Electra if I could go back and, and rename myself, I would be Ex Electra Ecstasy. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Speaking of ecstasy, no. <laughs> Not on YouTube, girlfriend. Not on YouTube. Let me let me stop you right. Pump your brakes. <laughs> no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm hold on. We're, I'm talking about a euphoric level. Slow down, y'all. Slow down. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> I thought we were taking this down the enhancement road. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. No I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Yo, another story. First time I went to an E club. Whew. That was funny. I've never you seen have, so much paper in my life. Sleepover. Yo, I was asleep. We were there till like six o'clock in the morning. 
And I was like, this is not the life for me. I didn't take any. I was just, I was probably like the only sober person in there. And I'm like, why is there so much vapor rub in here? I've never <laughs> had my finest <laughs> in my life. And they were like, you've never really taken it? And I was like, absolutely not. I don't even know what it is. I wouldn't even know what it looked like if it smacked me in the face. And they were like, the vapor rub helps to like enhance the high. And I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> I use vapor rub when I have a fucking stuffy nose and I'm cold. <laughs> I have a cold. I can't. <laughs> Yo, I was um, I was talking to one of my girls earlier today, and we were talking about. She's like, "Oh, I'm in, I'm, I'm shopping for a new Hitachi," and I was like, "For real? Why?" And she's like, "Cause it shorted out while I was using it," and I was like, "Yo, it must be Hitachi because back in the day, I had a Hitachi named Buzz. It was my first Hitachi ever, so I had a deep." connection with this Hitachi because when I got that Hitachi I love the strong vibration I was like this is the shit right so I get a cam show now I've had the, the Hitachi for a couple years now so let me give you a little backstory to the Hitachi but I've had it for like four or five years at this point right and it's so worn out that you can see like the wires in the cord and I had electron um, <laughs> electric tape on it the, the black tape on it so I'm like yeah I'm good I'm gonna make this shit last forever so I'm in a cam show and I'm going and I'm like, yeah, baby. and all of a sudden, and I'm looking at his face because I'm very much a visual person. And so I'm looking at his face and all of a sudden he just kind of stops for a second. Like he just like zones out. And then he's like, oh my God, platinum. You're a top. You know, he says your thing is on fire. And I'm like my thing. And so I just stop and think about it. Like, what is my thing? And then I'm like, oh, it's the Hitachi. The, the cord is literally flames. Like, oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Listen, this is what it reminds me of. Have you ever seen Hercules, the Disney cart, the Disney movie? Yes. And you know how Hades, you know how Hades has the little flames? The, in the hair. hair. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what my Hitachi looked like, okay? So I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta put this out. So I'm trying to put out the fire, right? I put out, oh my God. Don't scare me. <laughs> My partner just opened yeah. up the door. He just opened up the door and fucking scared the shit out of me. So anyway, so I'm like trying to put the fire out, right? So I, put, I get a towel. and Talk I about all that scary shit. So I'm, woo, oh, scary ass. I zoned the room. Because you know how you just feel like someone's watching you? And like I, I did a little zone of the room. And all of a sudden, I see this like man in the corner with a white t-shirt on. And I'm, I'm like, what the fuck? So anyways, um, and I knew I shut the door. So anyways, I'm putting out the flames, right? I get the towel and I'm like, I get the flames out and I take a deep breath because I'm like, oh my God, that was a close one. And then I'm sitting there like looking at his face. And when he realizes like everything's good, he starts crying, laughing. Like <laughs> it is the funniest fucking thing that has ever happened to like Buzzkill for real. Like Buzzkill, literally. And Buzzkill is in like he didn't have a, a Woody anymore, right? So he's crying so hard that he can't breathe. He's like, <gasps> Tears <laughs> coming down his eyes, and I'm over here like, yo, I just had a Michael Jackson moment on my crotch. This is not funny. I'm dead. I'm like, I could have went funny. to the ER with, with se the Hitachi sent me to the ER. Sex sent me to the ER and had yeah, one of those stories. Oh, yeah, third degree burns <laughs> on my hoo ha. Did like, you uh, did you see the chick on uh, TikTok who had a plug, who had a plug go too far up? Oh. No. Yes. Like I just come across Listen, it yesterday. I, I definitely had that happen before. Ooh. Yeah, she's like, I'm at the emergency room and this is so embarrassing. Forceps. Scalpel. Oh. <laughs> Vaseline. No, see, I live in a small today. I live in a small town, so there was no fucking way in hell we were going to the hospital. This bitch is gonna drive five hours to Jacksonville. Like I ain't going to no hospital. No, I made, town. I made, I made him get it out, like with his, with his finger. Like he, like it was a very fucking emotional and um, fragile time for me. <laughs> oh my god! Because you know it we was... talked about. Well, you know, we talked about us, like, you know, we talked about that the other day about anal and, like, all that. Mm -hmm. Well, the last time I used one of my butt plugs, it was kind of smaller. Right. And um, it was when me and my ex were still together, and I was trying to be sexy before 
He went to his show. <laughs> and and he with it a was like, line? I was probably, yeah, he was a little diamond on the back. You know, I was like, oh, Kevin, get some ass, baby. You know, like. Platinum, get in the corner. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Jesus. He was trying to be sexy with a butt flex. I'm sorry, man. I love it's all love. I, I really was. I'm I'm, listen, I'm like, I really need to give him, like, I really want to give him some pussy before he goes to work, like, goes play the drums. I'm going to be do something different today. And it was one of the littler ones. Uh, like, I needed to graduate. Like, I wasn't graduated and I should have graduated. Yeah, so we yeah. do. Fuck you. So we do the thing, right? Bum, 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 we do the thing, bum, and oh, I this said, is new, I'm, "New butt plug." It's yeah. not funny. Like it was traumatic, y'all. <laughs> traumatic. I feel sorry. I feel sorry for your bum, but listen, I'm not letting it. It was traumatic. I swear. <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> 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 oh, I gotta get, I can't. I'm crying. Like, I so, so from, okay, so, so I have a serious question. From, from that point, what do you decide to do? Do you decide to use a larger one next time, or to never use one again? Well, let's finish hearing about what happened. <laughs> Bitch, to the I never, ones. I never used one again. I never used one again. I'm, that's why I'm traumatized <laughs> for life. I was. So, like, okay, so no, I lose life. the little one, right? So. We get done having sex, and I sit up, and I'm like, oh, what'd you do with the butt plug? And he goes, I didn't take it out. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, like, I sit up, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I cannot fucking believe this. So I go to the toilet, and I just ba- I start bearing down. Like, I'm just trying to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, please get out of me. And I looked at him, and I said, you have got to get this out of me. And he's like, you know this. how? Butt plug and you know I'm this. like... I said, I don't give a fuck how. I said, everybody knows who the fuck we are. We are not going to the hospital to do this. <laughs> Hello, ma'am. So What's needless, emergency? needless to say, needless to say, he three gripped it out of my ass, and I thought I was gonna fucking die. Oh. I yeah, laid. You should marry him. You should marry no, him. That's I, like well, that's we like were su- love. we were supposed to get married. He was fucking. She said that's people. love. <laughs> a- anybody who's digging their whole forearm into my ass to pull out a small um, butt plug, that's marriage material, yo. Okay, that's enough. It wasn't that much. <laughs> it was no forearm involved. My my imagination took it there. I was like, yo, let's get those gloves that they use on the cows that come all the way up to your shoulder. Oh, shit. oh my god, we're going oh, in, y'all. We're going in. <laughs> Listen, it traumatized me for real. Like it really did. It traumatized me. <laughs> I can see. Anybody says it butt plug, she's like, oh. up. <laughs> <coughs> Don't say that. <coughs> Don't say the butt You're word. Not about butt plugs today. I swear I to God. You. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I, I have lo- I've been fortunate not to have any um BPE butt plug experiences. Like I've used them. <laughs> it's a whole acronym now. I didn't even fucking know that shit. You down with BPE butt plug experience? Oh my god! You down with BPE? I'm like, wow. shit. You can pass on me. No, no well, you BPE know, for you. No, I just I have been practicing a little because you know I'm supposed to wear a butt plug at Exotica, so I gotta and become a human Sunday. That I'm Ooh. excited about that. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should go buy a baby pool. I have one. I'm bringing one. Oh, is that what you're doing? You'll put me in the baby mm-hmm. pool, and I got the thing to blow it up. Although I think it would be really funny to watch somebody try to blow it up. <laughs> Our like it'll be like that um that SpongeBob SquarePants thing where it's like twenty. I was later. <laughs> I can't stand you. Still trying to blow that shit, bitch? You are in the wrong business, right? This is not the business for you. You cannot blow up that pool. <laughs> Anyways, the questions of the of the Kirby BBW fashion show. 
at this point. Yeah, they weren't realize. about butt plugs. <laughs> well, my advice would not be to wear a butt plug to the show. Well, in the fashion show, because if that shit falls out on stage, like oh. you could get away with it on the floor, even at the booth. But if you were on stage, all eyes on you, I would not even imagine the embarrassment. Especially if it's got some remnants of booty juice on there or Ooh. something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she said booty juice. Platinum, you are grounded, dog. I don't know what's wrong with you I'm today. Just You're just saying it. I'm just saying. That'd be December, you ain't everybody. said nothing. She just, I'm like, the woman was too shocked to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. Mm, Listen, mm. when we had when we had Paisley in Chicago, Paisley had dropped her wallet, and in the middle of her being on the stage, all of a sudden she hears her legal name out on the intercom because they're like they found her wallet, and so she freaks out and literally runs off the stage like. I don't know. So I thought her butt plug fell out of her butt. No, she didn't have one, but I'm just saying, like, she just, like, was twerking, getting her ass spanked by the um, Jordan, the MC, and then all of a sudden she just flies off the fucking stage, right? And I'm like, yo, what the fuck happened? Is she okay? So we're taking pictures, because, you know, we take pictures before behind the, the stage, and then we stay on stage after the show to get the pictures in front of the background and then we go off stage and take some more pictures and so i'm thinking we're gonna go take some pictures and paisley is gone am i motherfucking a and i'm like what happened so i'm thinking something happened like she's upset she didn't like being spanked by jordan like i don't know what's going on and then later she tells me yo i I dropped my wallet and like she's like i'm on stage and all of a sudden i hear my full fucking legal name (laughs) she's like everybody's listening to this and i'm like they don't even know who you are they don't know right. who that is. Right, that's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, they only know her is her. Like, right, but she doesn't know that. She in her head, her she's names. like, oh, they're fucking calling me out. Yeah, oh, so she was, oh, she was tripping. She was like, and you know, it's, it was her first Exotica. It was her first stage show. So, you know, there was a lot of, you know, firsts happening. So now she'd probably be like, man, you know, I did it again. And I told her, don't bring things on stage. Like, Leave your cell phone behind. Leave your wallet behind. Like, leave your stuff in a safe place. <clears throat> yeah, they f- they're glad we're we're glad she found their. Wa- uh, I can't even talk. We're glad found that they her found the wallet. wallet. Yeah, yeah, that's a blessing. It is a blessing, but yeah, I remember that moment, and it was funny because, well, it wasn't funny at first. I was concerned, and then it was funny later when she was like, "Girl, I'm shaking my ass, get my ass spanked," and next thing you know, my <laughs> full legal name. It's called my government. It- December, what are you going to, what are, what's your, have you decided what you're going to be for your, for your, awesome. um, for the Halloween thing? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so I am pretty set on being a slutty nun. Is that all right? You don't need our permission. That's what you want to <laughs> well, fucking do, then you be a slutty yeah, nun. Yeah, I was like, oh, uh, Yeah. Okay, well, the reason I was asking is because, like, if somebody else was going to do that, you know, I didn't nah. want to steal their shine from them, but... I don't think we have any other hoe nuns. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, I, found, yeah. Um, nuns, I found... Yeah, nuns of the 304 are no mo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what are you coming at, Saucy? Uh, I am going to be Coraline. <gasps> Coraline? Yes. <laughs> Hi, are you clapping? Yes, y'all. Yes, Coraline. I did so not since see I have the blue hair and I'm obsessed with Coraline, and plus I just know that nobody is going to think like nobody's going to ever pick her like as a costume or to be sexy. So I'm going to go with um. So yeah, I'm going to need yellow Kixies, ma'am, because um I'm going to go with just a raincoat, uh, and I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little razzle-dazzle saucy it, it, style it, on it. Keep it as a surprise. You got to go to the curvy BBW fashion show at Exotica <laughs> Expo, October 21st to the 23rd. So you can see. I Freaky forgot Friday. Live. Yeah, you're trying to give it all away. <laughs> Freaky Friday, we are doing a Halloween costume theme. Everyone is encouraged to put on their best costume. And it's Freaky Friday, so you never know what you're going to see. So we got a slut nun. We got Coraline over here who apparently has a whole <laughs> thing planned. <laughs> 
I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet because I kind of want to get an, a gauge what everybody else is doing. I have like 55 costumes. like and that's Yeah, I was going to say, who haven't you been? Who haven't you been? I'm a dope cosplayer. Like, I got to <laughs> give myself credit. Princess Leia Absolutely. was probably like my favorite favorite. Oh, but wow. I liked being Robin. Like, I don't know. Some of my stuff has just came out. Like, I have a really good idea of what I want to display and then I'm able to execute it so I've been really happy some of the stuff that I've done I've been like eh, I want to redo Snow White I think I didn't do as well with Snow White but um I did a goth Snow White one year but did you? yeah it was a couple years ago for a private party so, Ooh, yeah. private party mm -hmm. ladies yeah. I hate to interrupt me one y'all but my phone just hit one percent I hate to do this but I'd rather say goodbye than to hang up on y'all why? Oh. My phone's on 1%. Oh, your phone's on 1%. All right. Yeah. I'll be your private dancer. <laughs> Thank dancer you, for me. I know. I completely forgot about today being you Thursday. And I didn't bring my charger and I'm at my girlfriend's. So. Hey, Saucy. We, I appreciate you coming. We love you. And I can't wait to see you next month. We are like 40. Yes. I can't wait to see you. December, I cannot wait to meet you. I can't yes. wait to meet you, too. Yeah, yeah put, your handles, put your handles inside the um, send your handles to me so I can follow you on all yeah. your um, okay, on all your uh, I yeah, I need to do that shit in the chat. Oh, I'm such a slacker, I'm such a slacker. Ugh. It's anyway. okay, just put it in there and I'll find you. Gotcha, you ladies have a great night. So Thank nice you, Saucy. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So, I guess this gives us an opportunity to have some time just me and you. Yes. So I since so. I have you here, let's do a little interview. Let's find out a little bit more about December Monroe. Okay. Where are you from? You don't have to give like a specific location, but like you can mm -hmm. West Coast. Um, what do they call the middle? What's that? Middle? I know what you mean. Um, yeah. So um, I don't mind being a little more specific, actually. So um, I'm I'm in Phoenix now, but um, I moved here about five years ago. But I'm actually from Nashville. Nashville. Yeah, Nashville. And I try extremely hard to cover up that accent. You can tell. I could tell <laughs> I you had some Southern in you. It's like I saucy. Tell. Like there's and even with me, like I lived in Florida for a long time. And so being around in that environment and hearing that that sling, that ting tang, it just you there's certain things that I say that it mm -hmm. comes out no matter how much so. I'm from California, so I didn't originally have it. I've mm -hmm. just picked up different accents throughout various um, places that I've lived in my life. So, yeah. All right. right. So how long have you been in the business? Um, okay. So I started in my early 30s and I only did a couple of shoots. Um, and I decided at that time it was not quite right for me. Um, and then I got back into it in April of this year because I decided that it was time for me to get back into it. Awesome. What made you get into it? Was it something that someone introduced to you or did you just like watch social media and see the other girls were making money from being confident or just enjoyed being in the industry? Or like, what was it that inspired you to be like, all right, I'm going to do it this time. Okay. So this is going to be um, a little bit of an involved and strange story. <laughs> all right. So um, I had a hysterectomy back in 2015 and um then right after that, a couple years after that, I had a back surgery and I had a back surgery when they did that. It literally like killed the nerve that goes like through half of my hoo-ha. <laughs> and so I couldn't feel anything for a couple of years. All of a sudden, December of last year, haha, -ha, December, <laughs> ah. the feeling came back. And I mean, it came back stronger than it ever was. And then I realized, oh shit, what am I going to do with this? Because like, I was like, um, you know, masturbating like like multiple times a day. I could not uh, contain myself, basically. And I thought, OK, well, what would be a good way to take care of this? And I thought, hmm, bitch, you need to get back into porn. That's what you need to do. <laughs> oh, yes. So let that me ask you. Your thirst. <laughs> so December is when um, you got into the business. And I'm going to I'm going to guess that Monroe is because you're a Marilyn Monroe fan. Slightly, yeah. <laughs> I'm a Marilyn Monroe fan too. Like my living room is like a a freaking what do they call them shrine? Mm, yeah, <laughs> I even have the Marilyn Monroe pop pop thing with some K pops or what? Oh what yeah, the little fun pop thingies. Fun yeah. pop, funk, funk yeah. pop. Yeah, 
Yeah, like, I got it for me for Christmas. Christmas. I don't collect them. That's the only one that I have, but it's actually special because it's it's like if I was to collect them, I'd get the Star Wars collection because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Gotcha. But um, this isn't about me. This is about you. So you get into the business in <laughs> April of 2022. Yeah. And um, what do you do once you get here? Do you just like open up an OnlyFans? Are you webcamming? Did you shoot for some companies or exactly my, how did you like enter the business so i knew from my previous um trying to get into it that sexy jobs was a good place to start mm -hmm. so i started um i put my profile up there um i got some interest um and then i actually got um, a manager to represent me through there and um from there uh he was the one that told me that i needed to start building a twitter asap um, because there's a lot of traffic that comes through that. And then mm -hmm. um, he also suggested, um, I was trying to get in with OnlyFans, um, but the verification process has just, it's been a nightmare with them. So he told me to um, try Fansly as a backup. And that's, uh, I I've been uploading my stuff to Fansly. I just got a many vids uh, verified and I'm ready to upload content to there now. Um, other than that, uh, it's, that's pretty much been it. And I, uh, I use Twitter like a lot because there are so many sex workers on Twitter and that's, that's really how I've been networking. Um, and space. Working out. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. Space. That's a really yeah. good space. What kind of content do you specialize in? I mean, I know you said something about porn, so I'm going to assume that you do hardcore, but is there anything else mm -hmm. that you specialize in, in terms of fetish kink or other than just normal hardcore porn? I am a fan of BDSM. Yes. Receiver um, or giver? Both. I'm a switch. Um, when it comes to, Interesting. yeah, when it comes to gentlemen, usually I like to dom them when it comes to um, ladies. It's kind of, it depends on the, the lady's personality as to whether I want to dom them or I want to let them dom me or kind of switch it up. I dom you. Ooh, I'm a straight yeah, dom. Girl. I don't, I'm not yeah. submissive at all. In fact, like the, the only that. place that I'm submissive <laughs> is in my partnership. And even in that partnership, I, um, I would say it was like a, it's more of an equal kind of thing, but right. he's more, he's more, he's like, I don't know how to explain it. He's a cancer. So he's like, not mm. sensitive, but he's not like overly confident alpha. I don't know how to explain it. Like he's just a unique individual and he's fucking awesome. But that's the only that's time good. that I submit when it's industry, when it's female, when it's anybody outside of that partnership, like I am 100% dom. So I would definitely, I can't wait to get to the booth. I'm going to dom you there. <laughs> yes. yes. You're going to love it. They're going to love I, it because I'm a sensual dom with females. I'm a sadistic dom with men, but I'm a sensual dom with females. It's really weird. Yeah. Being sensually dominated by a female is like, mm, it's, it's the best. It's the absolute best. Um, and I do like to administer pain though, when it comes to men. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Kind of, What's your favorite I, thing to do? Like, I'm not a big ball buster, even though it's fun. It for me, it's a lot of like physical exertion. It's like exercising, mm -hmm. so I don't like it. But I do right. love face sitting, especially mm -hmm. like fart sniffers. Oh my god, my absolute <laughs> favorite. Because I'm, you know, I'm a fart girl. Like I'm, I'm, I'm the mm -hmm. queen of farts, and so I love knowing that a willing sniffer is going to bury his face and catch all this gas, like. Right. <laughs> love it. Absolutely freaking love it. So you are just pretty much starting out. Um, how mm -hmm. did you hear about the curvy BBW fashion show? Missy Deep. Missy she Deep, who mm -hmm. actually was with us in Miami. She did her first fashion show in Miami. Yeah, she had told me. Um, and, and previously, I was going to try to apply for Miami. However, I just had so, too many things going on in my personal life that I wasn't going to be ready for it. And so I decided um, also professionally, I wanted to kind of grow myself a little bit um, and make sure that I was ready for something like that. And so she told me to, to make sure that I uh, got everything ready and everything. And she told me to make sure to, to get involved with the one in New Jersey. And I was like, all right. I think that's a good idea. I think I can do that. Awesome. 
I'm glad that you that you took the plunge. And I was, you know, I'm one of those people <laughs> like being a part of the like administering, organizing, hosting the BBW fashion show. I don't mm -hmm. regardless of how I feel about people personally, and I don't have any feelings towards you. Like this is actually just a general statement because it's actually one of the questions that I got, like, you know, when I'm looking at the people that I'm looking to add to the show, like mm -hmm. I just look for people that so far, I really haven't had to reject anybody like a few I had to put on a waiting list because we have a roster that's out of control right now. I think we're at, like, <laughs> yeah. 25 girls. It's like crazy insane. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my personal feelings when I do stuff like this, I can't be a leader. I can't have a community and I can't promote body positivity if my personal feelings impede the ability to let people come on stage. You know what I mean? I do not mm -hmm. allow people that do drama, all that kind of shit. Like you got to have a good energy. Yeah. You have to want to support other women. It can't be just about you and there can't be no, mm -hmm. a, any sense of entitlement. And it has to be, you know, there, there's a certain energy that has to come with being a part of the show because we all feed off of each other. And as you see in the group, like I don't tolerate drama. Like we haven't had any, but I don't tolerate it either. Like there's not going right. to be, it's not the space for it in, in my opinion. <clears throat> and this is not that type of environment. Like it's either we're here to to present positivity and uplift each other. And, mm -hmm. you know, because I feel like we're stereotyped. And when we're stereotyped, we're stereotyped as being these miserable people that yeah. don't care about ourselves. We're lazy. We we hate ourselves. We hate everybody else. And that's bullshit. That's yeah. fucking bullshit. I don't hate I anybody. Agree. I'm all about love and peace and happiness and finding your, your sweet spot of success and building mm -hmm. you up. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a human. I have my moments of weakness and sometimes I fall true. You know, I've, I've been a gossiper sometimes like, you know, it happens. We're fucking females. Like, and we're yeah. in an industry <laughs> full of like, craziness, so it's only natural. But ultimately at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't have time for that shit. Like it doesn't make me money. I don't want to be a part of it, you know? Right. Yeah, if it's not lucrative to the business, then I feel like there's really just no point in it. It's just petty. Well, I do I do have an idea. I would love to do like wrestling matches and boxing matches. Like if y'all are beefing and y'all really want to go at it, right? We can set up a pay-per-view. <laughs> I will book a fucking ring, a boxing ring, wrestling ring, whatever, and we will do a pay-per-view <laughs> and y'all can just go at it. At that the is end a of good it. Idea. At the end of it, like everybody gets to make money because I'm not keeping the money for myself. You know, everybody gets to make money. And at the end of it, you're going to look at the person and be like, damn, this is really stupid. Like, why are we doing this? <laughs> right. Dead ass. And I'm going to tell you why. I, like, you know, it's funny when when I was younger, I have a sister, a younger sister. Right. And we're two years mm -hmm. apart and we never got along. We were like oil and water. Literally. I'm the leader. She's the follower. I am an extrovert. She's a you know, she's just. Like, like, I just could never get with her program. Like, I was just always in this, like, space of, of my own, right? I've always been an individual weirdo. Mm -hmm. So when we were younger, we used to fight a lot, a lot. Like, we always fought. I could not stand her. <laughs> I, she just was so dumb to me. Like, she got into trouble mm -hmm. all the time because she was one of those people that would get into the cookie jar and leave the the lid off the crumbs everywhere oh, have chocolate okay. on her face and be like no i didn't take the cookies and i'd be like okay dummy you just left the trail <laughs> like all the evidence is on your face i'd be the one that would clean up the hot the kitchen would be cleaner when i was done than when i went and got the cookies like i'm making sure there's not any fingerprints no crime scene mm -hmm. evidence nothing so i digress when we were kids we used to fight a lot and my my mom and my dad <clears> used <throat> to make us wrestle they put oh, us wow. in these little boxing matches and they'd be like, all right, y'all want to fight? And I was a beast. Like I was, I was down. I was like, I'm gonna fuck you up. Now my <laughs> sister, on the other hand, she was like, oh no. So she would be like, nah, we're not doing this. So eventually when we got older, we got into some real fights and this bitch pulled out a knife on me. Oh, and I was like, all right, cool. I've beaten you up enough times in our life that we're, we're not, we're not going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is getting a little too far. But she was tired. She was tired of getting her ass whooped. <laughs> I love her to death now. Like we we talk about these things. And of course, her version of events is different than mine. So somewhere in the middle, we're telling the truth. But you know, it's it's funny because we talk about that and it reminds me of like 
when when people are beefing with each other, I'm like, yo, let's just get a boxing ring or a wrestling ring and let <laughs> everybody just go to fucking town and you know, yeah. ding ding ding, whoever wins, you know what I mean? You get to you get yeah. to take the championship award or the big belt or whatever. <laughs> that that's that's how I'm going to deal with the drama. <laughs> like I mean, I feel like that's a pretty good way to do that because yeah, like you said. It, at the end of the day, when it comes to something like that, like you're gonna realize how stupid your baby, you're both being. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Hey, fairy sex mother, I see you. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Matthew. I want to make sure everybody that's in the chat that's chatting um, gets a special hello. Um, but at the end of the day, oftentimes what happens is one of a few things. One, the first and the most popular is that you actually cared about this person. And if you genuinely mm -hmm. care about somebody, then you don't want to try to destroy them even after they fuck you over or even after you have to separate. And True. it happened with me a million and five times. I've had many models say all kinds of stuff about me. And I'm like, you don't want me to share what you did that led us to this situation either. Did I make mm -hmm. mistakes? I sure did. But guess what? I'm the first person that's going to accept responsibility for my fuck ups. That's first and foremost. And a lot of times people don't want to go into those conversations with me because they don't want to have to accept what they've done. They don't want to face their demons or accept responsibility for their shit. So anyways, mm -hmm. like you cared about this person. If you care about somebody, then even in the midst, it's like a breakup. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean, it's like a breakup. I'm not a revengeful person. I feel like everything that you do comes back to you. So I'm going to mm -hmm. try to keep my slate clean. I don't want no bad karma. And I feel like, you know, and I'm a breakup person that's like, I'm upset, you know, I'm going to mm -hmm. think about what, what mistakes that I make. And I'm going to think about, you know, how responsible I am versus, you know, were we even a match or like, where did this go wrong for analytical purposes? Cause I'm an analyzer. Mm -hmm. But then after that, I'm like, fuck it. Like it is what it is. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Like getting revengeful is wasted energy. Yeah, it just didn't work out. That's not your person. Move on. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Move because on. it's just silly to sit there and hold on and to really just you you exert your own efforts and like too much of it. Um, it's when unhealthy. You're trying to get back at somebody. Yeah, it's unhealthy. Yeah. It's baggage. And this is what I tell everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna change the subject. But okay, <laughs> I tell everybody that energy, that time that you spent going back and forth with someone on Twitter, shouting people out or like calling them out on Instagram or whatever it is that you're doing, going back and forth. That energy that you put into that is one, it's negative. So you're going to get negative back. And mm -hmm. two, that's energy that you should be investing in yourself to make yourself a better person. So you don't experience that again, or so that you don't make those same mistakes. So yep. the reason why when people are like, oh, you know, she just, dropped me like a bad habit and moved on, I realized that I made some mistakes and I knew that I had to do some self-evaluation and I knew that I had to do some work. So it wasn't personal to you. In fact, it was me saying, damn, you know, I could have handled that situation better. And now I need to figure out how I'm going to make sure that that doesn't happen again, happen again in the future. And people don't realize that they just assume that right. because they know they fucked up, that it's got to be like some drama and then they got to villainize. And it's like, come on, man. You know, I know I'm a grown ass woman. I'm 47 years old. I have no problem saying I fucked up and made some mistakes and I work every day to be better than I was yesterday, period. So moving along, moving along. <laughs> what is in the future for December Monroe? Ooh, well, for Exotica, um, I have some pretty special collabs that I'm really, really excited about. I don't know how much information that I can give out here. Um, mm, don't give it out. We're okay. just going to, we just, you need to go. Um, if you guys are watching, make sure you go check her out on our social media. If you want to drop that right now and they can go follow you. What's your uh, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. It's just at December Monroe. Pretty simple. Yep. <laughs> Go check out her social media so you can see what's up and coming when her projects release and find out who she did some special collabs with. But moving along. Um, mm -hmm. So you're going to New Jersey. Are you planning on going to the DC show? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's not looking likely right now because December uh, in the month of December, uh, I'm going to have 
a lot of things going on, um, a lot of traveling. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it out there. I don't think Where I Where are you traveling to? Well, I'm likely going to be traveling to Memphis. Um, that's one. Um, potentially Atlanta. And then um, I'm trying to think. Where was the other one? I can't remember. I have so many. Hmm? I said Baltimore. Baltimore. Oh, you want me to come to Baltimore? Ooh, I want I everybody to come that. to Baltimore. It's a fucking All right, well, place. I might have to make that happen. We'll see what happens there. Um, <laughs> I know in November, uh, the big beginning, uh, the first week of November, I'm going to be um, in Vegas because I'm going to be shooting with a brand new BBW startup company on oh. the, either the 4th or the 5th. Um, and I'm actually pretty excited about that one. And then I'm trying to think here. I know there's something else in October, the end of October that I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be going to and I can't remember where it is offhand. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. It's not like we're holding you to a calendar. It's all good. That's it's true. just conversation. That's so true. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Before you got into the business, did you research anything or did you take some time to kind of figure out like what you were getting yourself into? Yes and no. Um, when I first started in my early 30s, uh, which was like a million years ago, um, <laughs> I uh, for me it was. <laughs> Well, I'm 43, so exact. it seems like a million years ago when I'm 43 now. But yeah, um, I did a little bit of research, but I didn't do nearly enough. That's why this time when I decided to get back into it, I took the time from literally the month of December 2021 until April 2022 before I actually um, went for it. Because I wanted to make sure that I was doing better research than before. And also I know that like trends and um, that the industry change. itself just, changes. Just, just since December to April. Exactly. You know, things change. Yeah. yeah. Let alone the what, 10 plus years I went before, um, right. you know, without getting right. into it. So. Well, 10 years, if you, if it was 10 years, then you, that was before social media really turned into what it is now. It's before. Yes. BBW. Fans were like this teeny tiny little category. There was not much of a market at all for BBWs back then. Well, there was a market, just people didn't know about it. That's it was true. A, it, was, it was a different, you know, when people ask me about that, I'm like, nah, I've always known that there was like a bigger community than what was being represented online, which is why I've become yeah. so passionate about making sure that BBWs are getting proper recognition and giving them spaces to like represent their, to represent our genre. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of BBWs. There just wasn't like people didn't see them. It wasn't until the implosion <laughs> explosion of social media when it was like more public. Yeah. Yeah. There were, there were back then there were specialty forums. There was like um, fat forums and, Curvage mm -hmm. and ooh, Coach Fairy wants to join us. Hello, Miss hey. Coach Fairy. Hey, welcome to the Hi. jungle. <laughs> welcome to the bad this, side. Yeah, I've been on this soundtrack thing today. Oh. In fact, let me share a little story with you, real quick, Move. off topic. I worked in um, collections mm -hmm. many, many, many moons ago. Before, well, as I was getting into the industry, I had a job that I had been with for a while. And I was a bill collector and I am not good at staying on task in an office environment. Like I have to draw, I have to sing, I have to do something. Like I can't just sit there and call people and be like, you know, you need to pay your bill. It's mm -hmm. time to pay your bill. It's this, is gonna, pay. this is going to be bad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and so yeah. I would draw and I like one year for Christmas, they wouldn't let us get a, get a Christmas tree. So we took the lights and we made a Christmas tree on the wall. And then we put, I drew like Scooby-Doo and, um, hello kitty and like freehand draw oh. and i we all put those on the wall and that was like our christmas tree and those were the ornaments but i digress i used to make um jingles so i would take regular music from the radio and i'd be like um you remember that song by joe i don't want to be a player no more yeah i, I took what that one and I, was, <laughs> right. I was like i don't want to be a debtor no more because that's what they, that's what you call somebody that owes money right they're a debtor 
<laughs> and I was I got into so much trouble because my oh. boss was like, "You're distracting the floor." Because then the next person would do the next one, and they'd be like, "I just keep calling out, and you don't want to pay your bills." <laughs> like, and it would it would end up like there was twelve people in my group, and like everybody except for the exception of a couple people that were like, "I don't know that song too," and then the lines. They're, they're not creative. Yeah, the the people that were like, <laughs> "You're distracting me from doing my job." But anyways, uh, so the other 10 people. If you can't multitask, just say that. Right? Well, you're not supposed to do that stuff on, on the on the call center floor anyways. No, but no, no. The you weren't the people, problem. I was the problem. I was <laughs> such an instigator and such a leader. And then next thing you know, the other 10 people are participating and like nobody's making calls because they're, to- they're too busy participating in this like jingle string, right? <laughs> so Carrie I am the jingle true. queen. So these songs that I'm coming up with are just like, you know, I could be doing jingles all day. <laughs> I could do jingles all day. Like you give me it. I want to I want to get really good. I used to be good at like you give me a topic or a word. Song association. I love song that association. Game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm so good at that game. It's so fun. And I will take that and I'll be like, oh, so we're doing Cardi B. OK, what's the word? The word is hot dog. OK. <laughs> Damn. So. <laughs> I'm sitting here yeah. trying to be like Cardi B said hot dog in the song when Hold up. no she she doesn't ever say it you take her song and you you use the the melody and you create the lyrics based around the hot dog oh hot dog hot dog once you grab the bun with the ketchup and the mustard add a few <laughs> chili sliders then you got a hot dog. no no I like morning Franks <laughs> oh wow wow. You know the part where she's like, "I like morning sex." <laughs> I, like morning, I like morning Franks. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's see why I got in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, now yeah. I'm in my head like, "See, little bitch, you can't eat a dog with your mustard food." Mm. Oh my god! Stop it! <laughs> oh my god! Give me that I relish. That, mm-hmm. This is relish. This is chili. Yeah, this is a hot dog school. Mm. Oh my god, I can't. This is a hot dog <laughs> bun. I got bars and everything in my head, like just I'm circulating. Done. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm done. It almost reminds me when Rizzy was talking about how the butt plug got stuck. Oh shit. <laughs> I missed that. I'm a oh, you missed. Oh my god, you missed. I was you over here doing homework. You- you missed my Hitachi caught on fire and almost turned my coochie into a Michael Jackson hair <laughs> moment. Yeah. She's like, oh, no. no. Yeah. yeah. You'll have to watch the replay. I can't. Oh, I, I will. Oh, yeah. You got to watch the replay. So <laughs> anyways, <gasps> Miss Fairy Sex Mother, what you been up to? Happy belated birthday, by the way. Even though we Thank said it you. in the group, I feel like we <laughs> say it live. <laughs> Thank you, Let's you know, Virgo season. Virgo. Yeah, you know, the sign of perfection. Yes, which means I'm like the ultimate sub because all I do is just like make everything perfect for everyone. <laughs> but oh my I ain't nothing, nothing but homework. <laughs> just doing a lot of homework and trying to get through this last year of grad school, which is like kicking my ass, but it's okay. You're going to do it. You're going to do great. Child, and then I want to get a PhD. Who? What is wrong with me? Ooh. Ooh. What is wrong hey, with me? There's nothing wrong with wanting bigger and better things for yourself. Yeah, and you not only wanting better. them, but working for them. Because let me tell you something: the key to my success isn't that I sucked a bunch of dicks and, and sucked the right dicks. Because in fact, <laughs> I didn't really suck that many dicks, to be honest with you. Because I realized early on that t- somebody telling me to suck their dick turned me off, and <laughs> Okay. Being on set and someone telling me how to do the do turned me off. And so, yeah, that's that's a, one of the biggest reasons why I left doing porn is that I don't like someone telling me what to do. I'm dominant. I want to be in control. And when you're dealing with a lot of male talent, they think they're in control. And so we just clash, bump heads. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I digress. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> you achieved my goals. Or trying to oh, achieve yeah. stuff? Did you delete so it? So my key to success is consistency. I could have retired a million and five times, but I, just, I keep it consistent. I work every day. It's called culture or capture? Is that what it's called? Yes. Culture or capture? 
I was doing um, an interview and I was saving it to the computer and I think my boyfriend either deleted it or it went away. Uh, I ejected it. Ejected oh, what? You ejected it? Oh, no. Eject means to take away. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wong, wong, wong. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's like, I just want to cry right now. Wow. She's like, I'm just going to laugh because if I don't, I'm going <laughs> to scream and cry. But anyways, consistency, ahead, okay. consistency, consistency, consistency. And what I'm also going to share with you, I have been in the business for 18 years and I still learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. I learn from other creators. I learn from other performers. I am not afraid to admit that I don't know everything. I know a lot. I'm pretty freaking smart. High but key. I don't know everything. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Except that I'm about to kill this desk in a minute if I keep doing that. Ooh, don't kill the desk. Don't kill the desk. I'm going to Jason Voorhees this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never seen a Jason movie like from start to finish. <gasps> oh, wow. I'm not a wow. fan of, I'm not a fan of uh, Scary. Look at my face. I'm like. Yeah, I've never seen a um, <laughs> Jason, Freddy, Freddy Krueger. I'm going to remove her from this live right <laughs> now. Yeah. Don't Kill the shoot feet. me. Kill the feet. I'm not going to shoot like... you. I'm just going to cut you. Uh, Matter of fact, I'm, not... I'm cutting you from the fashion show. I am no. offended right now. How could you not watch Jason? <laughs> I'm not a scary movie kind of girl because in real life I'm a pussy. So like if you jump at me or something like scares me, I like react. <laughs> and so like the... T- <laughs> <laughs> so like the times where like my friends oh my god I see uh, anxiety so the times where like my friends like take me to um like to go see scary movies I would sit there like the entire time and just like in the beginning of the movie I'm watching but as it soon as something crazy is gonna happen I'm just like yeah I, I love, love I you know what I miss I miss drive-in theaters because the <sighs> mystery of being in this okay. crowd and not knowing who's in these other cars. And like I always got like I used to love knowing that people were fucking close to me. In fact, I fucked at a drive-in. Hey. If you've never <laughs> fucked at a drive-in, you're not you missing out. You're missing out. You are missing <laughs> out. It's so fun. Even in a movie. Okay. Ooh, nasty. Yeah. Nasty girl. That's how but I anyways, found out that I was like into that. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the drive-in. I can't believe you haven't seen Friday the 13th. Like, that is... I've seen Scary Movie. That's, that's not... No. <laughs> oh, that don't count? Okay. Okay, I tried. Hello, Sydney. <laughs> I've seen um, uh, Texas Chainsaw, Texas Massacre. Okay. Mm, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. It's yeah, one of my I favorites. S- I saw, like, the, the 2006 16, with Jennifer 2012. Beale. Yes. With Jennifer Beale. Yes, yeah. Yes. I saw that one. Yeah. I saw Jennifer's body. Yeah. I like that one. Oh, God. That's okay. with, um, what's her face from Megan Fox. Megan. Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan. Okay. Megan see, I'm, Fox. I'm back in good graces. Ha ha. I, I should do, I should do celebrity, um, impressions. Hi. I'm Megan Fox. I don't know shit. I only know what you tell me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, give me someone else. Give me someone else. Do Take Lois from um fa- from Family Guy. Who? Lois, Lois from, from Family Lois. Guy. Oh, okay. Hello, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. How am I doing? How am I doing? Am I doing okay? <laughs> Peter. Oh shit. <laughs> All right, who's next? Next, next. Give me another one. Ooh, I gotta think. I gotta think. Adele. Oh wow, how does that's Adele my talk? favorite carpool karaoke when she um does the whole like Nicki Minaj spit. Oh, with oh, James Corden, yes, yes, Corbin, yeah, James oh. Corbin. Okay, wait a minute. Um, see, I don't know names. That's my problem. Adele. Right there. <clears throat> it's like I can't really figure it out. I'm still trying to like. No, that sounds too Scottish. No, I I don't have Adele. I'll have to listen to Adele again. Call me from the other side. 
Oh, <laughs> that could be a song about sex coming why, from the why. other side. <laughs> you are a woman of many talents. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna get my, my partner's gonna come over here and be like, "Yo, I'm unplugging this shit." What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, he's like, fucking mine. He popped in earlier and scared the shiznit out of me. Like, you yeah. know how you just scan the room because, like, I felt like somebody was close. I felt like somebody was watching, so I just like scan the room because I'm like, nobody should be in here. He's not supposed to be home. So I scan the room, and all of a sudden, I look, and the door is ajar, like this much, and you just see this man in the in the doorway and he's smiling he's laughing because he knows i'm about to be freaked out and he's got this white t-shirt and i'm just like "Ah!" (laughs) and he's like he thinks he's over there (laughs) (laughs) he's so happy that he scared me that it worked and i'm like i'm almost like how long were you there but you know we were live so i couldn't really have a conversation with him but i was just like dang you know, scared the show out of me. I can't. I'm gonna actually play that as a replay on Instagram. I'm gonna go get the little clip or whatever. Have you ever been like so shocked or scared that you farted? Like someone ever like yeah. <laughs> someone ever like popped in on you and it like fucked you up so bad you just ended I up feel farting. like we should change your name to Fartin' Fairy. Fartin' Fairy. Because you know what? Every time we go live, you mention farting. I feel like you're like low key obsessed. Oh. I'm obsessed with my farts. <laughs> you're the kind of person that's like oh i want to smell my own no like literally if I, fart, <laughs> I have to smell it to like make sure i'm cool like because i know if it's rancid oh i need to go do a detox <laughs> asap okay question if nobody can smell it do you do you claim it Mm-mm. like if you know how when you fart and it's like a silent but deadly and then sometimes they might catch a whiff and sometimes they don't or do you just like Excuse yourself every time you fart. If it's silent, I'm not gonna I don't lie. Say nothing. I don't say nothing. If you don't know, I don't know. I ain't saying nothing. But if you <laughs> yeah, look I don't like say you, nothing. if you look like your face is like, and I'd be like, <laughs> excuse me, oops, my bad. Like I'm at home, I let that shit rip. Like da, 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 da. I'm even worse. He knows. He knows. Cause oh my god, if I'm about to fart, this is what's about to happen. <laughs> and he, I have so many videos like one of my guys who's one of my fart fans that I've had forever he sent me a letter an email not a letter but oh, I'm gonna say, he oh, sent me an letter. email and was like yo your dude is hilarious the way he responds like there was this one part <laughs> that I swear sounded like a trumpet it sounded oh, like wow. I literally had some sort of like troll in my butt going <laughs> I don't know where it came from. I don't know how it happened, but it literally sounded like I had, and he calls me trumpet, butt because I'm of so this weak. fart, like that fart is so famous that it has a name. So <laughs> Make it I a let out this fart and you hear him. I'm filming it. Right. And I'm, I'm super excited. Cause I'm like, Oh yeah, I never get those on film. I got it. And you hear him in the background. He's like, Oh damn. What the fuck? You're not alone. Other people are in the room with you. Like, He's going on this rant. <laughs> and so the guy, my fan emails me and he's like, yeah, that shit is hilarious. He was like, I'm intrigued by the fart. And I'm like thinking of being a sniffer. And then he's like, all of a sudden you hear this, like, it's almost like not a monologue, but like someone's doing a voiceover or like, um, you know how they have the, the movies where and you'll hear Morgan Freeman in the back. Yeah. Uh-huh. Narrating this cheetah. Something is running along in the forest ready for his <laughs> prey. It, it sounds like he's doing that shit. That narrator. He's narrating my farts. I'm super weak at the fact that... <laughs> and I, I was done. I was like, the <laughs> fact that... And it, so I had to tell him, I was like, I don't know if I should tell you to shut the fuck up or if I should tell you to keep it up because some of them like them. Now I'm like, I just, you know, I can't tell him to shut the fuck up. Like, it just happens. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it, I can't control the fart. So if the fart happens in these moments when we're just laying in bed or, you know, I've even done queefing like after we've got it on and I've got a coochie full of, you know, goodies. I like that. That was a hot way to say it. Well, I have to remember we're on YouTube and Twitch, so we have to keep it like friendly. 
and I have a potty mouth, so same. But this thing is filthy. Might as well just put me in a toilet. Yeah, because <laughs> you I can't hate, wipe me. I'm the type I of love being around my in. mom, but I also hate being around my mom because I have to watch my mouth out of respect. And I know I've shared this before, but I'm going to share it again. My mother has ninja backhand <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> Or I don't know if it's a syndrome or if it's like a, a, a hero trait. Okay. <laughs> a superpower. <laughs> like, I can be 25 feet away. Nowhere within earshot. I can whisper. And she can like catch oh, it. And my mom, <laughs> who I can't even see in any type of peripher- peripheral vision. I don't even know that my mom's in the same vicinity. Like, I don't even think she's on the same floor as me. Like, a whole nother part of the house. It's right And here. all of a sudden, she will be literally right there in that backhand. <laughs> and then <clears throat> as soon as I realize I just got the shit smacked out of me, I look around because, you know, we're as trying to figure out As soon as I happened. realize, I'm so dead. She's gone. <laughs> and then she got the nerve to disappear. Jeez. I'm like, what just happened? Like, not only am I like stunned from the slap, I'm also stunned because where did she go? Where did she come from? First of all, where did she come from and where did she go? It is like some ninja shit. And I tell her, I'm like, you might be an older lady, but you still got that ninja slap, that backhand. Like, that's something fierce. So, yeah, I gotta watch my mouth. I can't I get, wait like, to be a mom so I can experience that. <clears throat> In like 88 years. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I no. <laughs> I want to experience kids, like a mom reaction to stuff. Kids today, if mm-mm. I had them <laughs> take my stuff out. I was like, yo, take it all. I mm-mm. <laughs> I could not be a mother right now. Like Ooh, I mean, just, check it on him. Kids, Forever. Um, Kids today are fucking insane. Like, uh-huh. uh, there's some good ones out there. I'm not going to say they're all bad, but generally speaking, I am a dog mom for a reason. I had baby fever. My man said, Come and buy you a dog. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you snorted. Because <laughs> that's exactly what the happened. The fact that you. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> like, we were together for three. It was like our three year, three years. Yeah, we got. We were, it was like three year anniversary, and I was like, "Babe, I'm having baby fever," and he was like, "Huh?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I want like something to care for, like I want an extension of me and you. I want some something, someone to care for." He was like, "Oh, okay." Three weeks later, hey, babe, you want to go get a dog? Sure. Yeah, Yo, <laughs> that. Listen, I don't, I don't know him, but he just got like mad brownie points in my book right <laughs> right other guys would have been like yo let me oh that means i get to fuck you raw i'm gonna right. yeah. of you we do that we're gonna anyways, make a baby but, yeah he but was he like definitely... hell nah Mm-mm. let's go to like, the and get a dog <laughs> whenever Smart. it's a thought of him about to like you know release the happy juice it's like okay bye-bye <laughs> so that's that's one smart individual like <laughs> yeah that is a smart individual because yeah that's all i got to say smart <laughs> individual. Mad kudos. you're saying that you're a smart individual for not releasing your happy juices inside of my thought box thought box i love it <laughs> it's so funny because i was just telling somebody <clears throat> um i was looking at instagram I was doing a, a coaching consultation with one of the girls and we're looking at our social media or whatever. And of course, as I'm going through her social media, I get sucked into the rabbit hole of looking at my social media and I'm looking at my feed of people that I follow. And there's this chick that's on there and every fucking video is her twerking and doing all this like thought pocket stuff. And so I tell the girls, <laughs> listen, if you look at my social media, one thing I am not doing is thought pocket stuff. I don't, if you don't know how to find my boom chicky bow wow stuff, right? I, I don't want you there. I love it. Boom chicky bow wow. Yeah. Boom chicky bow wow. Yeah. Chicka wow wow. Yeah. That's like, a hot suit. I think my name in itself is a pretty good indicator of what I do. Like, yes. Because, <laughs> you know, my advice to everyone is, you know, less is more. 
Stop trying to overdo what you put on social media and then getting mad when your account gets taken down or your posts get flagged. It doesn't belong there. It's not content that should be free anyways. That's End a good story. point. That's, very, good very, point. that's valid. That's very The valid. people that want to follow you and get to that stuff, you know what I'm saying? They're not complaining. In fact, the more you show, the more you do, the more you give away. And let, let's face it, yeah. no one's buying the milk if they can get the cow for free. Facts. So yep. my advice is less is more. Keep it classy. Keep it safe for work. And let them become a fan of you and your personality and what you, you know, what you do show. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And let them have the good stuff on the other side where you're being paid. That's Period. a very, very good Because real fans will support you. Right. right. Yep. But my days of being a thought pocket, I've been a thought pocket. Don't work, don't don't get it twisted. <laughs> Exa- I was just about to do the same thing. <laughs> thought pocket. That's I wonder who created the hot pocket. Huh? The hot pot. I wonder who created the hot pocket commercial. Whoever it was, commercial whoever came up with that jingle was brilliant. Hot yeah. Pocket. Just that one and sweet. the San Francisco tree. That's probably where they got it from because it sounds very similar. Probably. Probably. Probably, yeah. to be honest. Do you guys remember? Well, probably not you, Fairy, but December. Let me ask I'm you a, a question. I'm a young thing. <laughs> Girl, you're the baby. Boy, are y'all grown women? I just be like, damn, I can't wait to get like y'all. Oh my goodness. <laughs> don't don't rush it. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, no, I'm tra- I'm enjoying the process, but it's just <laughs> like when I whenever I meet other women in the industry and like they tell me like how old they are, I just be like, wow, like I love that. <laughs> like you're in your 40s, your 50s, you're in your 60s, whatever, late 30s, and you're just like living because you know, like well, not you know, but like how I was oh. raised. You know, like how I was raised yep. and stuff like that. Um, everybody was just like, by the time you get to that age, you need to be settled down with a man and have kids and just live like this simple whatever life. I can live a simple life and still be a whore. You live your <laughs> life. This is the thing. You know? and I talk about this all the time. And I'll say it again. You have to live your life your way. Mm-hmm. You have to. You have to travel down your path and have your own individual independent journey. Mm -hmm. It's necessary. The reason why people are so fucking hateful and miserable is because they're living somebody else's dream. Mm -hmm. They're abiding by somebody else's rules. And they thought that it was the safe way that was going to give them the best life. But in the end, it doesn't give them the best, best life. They still lose their jobs. They hate their jobs. They hate their wives and husbands. They're still struggling financially they're lost emotionally, spiritually, and just in general. Their idea of a relationship is ownership. Like, they're all jacked up. Mm-hmm. And the best yep. thing that could have happened to me was becoming an entrepreneur through, a, through adult entertainment because I found my confidence. I realized mm-hmm. that I had skills that I can utilize in any environment, whether it's <clears throat> adult or not. Because if you can market any, if you can market an adult entertainment, you can market anything. You can sell water to an thing. I was just telling somebody that the other day, like he was very skeptical, skeptical about joining the industry because he was like, what, what can I do afterwards? And I was like, the adult entertainment industry is so wide. Mm -hmm. Like you can do anything. Pun intended. uh, (laughs) Like you can do anything. Cause especially if you make your own content, and you're the one putting it mm-hmm. out there. That's marketing itself. That's pre post production. That's mass media skills. This helps you with like your public speaking because you already have to perform in a sense. Mm-hmm. So now you know how to act. Like you can do a lot. You can do yeah. you can do anything. Like, you know, I'm not gonna say that I, I didn't have a lot of talents and skills before I got into the industry, but I will say that I have sharpened a lot of those talents and skills and expanded. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I was good at marketing, but now I'm great at marketing. I was good at graphic design. Now I'm great at graphic design. Like I, That's in dope. fact, I have, I have a virtual yeah. assistant training <laughs> program. Um, I just graduated my first student today. I've had people take the training, but I never actually like did the training <laughs> with them. It was like, here, here are the material materials, you know, good luck. Well, today I, um, 
I actually, you know, I've been doing these modules mm -hmm. and like we spend time talking about them and really like changing the mindset. Cause I feel like when you need cold, most everybody needs some sort of coaching or consultation just mm -hmm. to give you a different perspective mm -hmm. and, and get you We're out going of live on Instagram in 30 minutes. You are? When we supposed to be doing that too? Today? Oh yeah. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Oops. Um, <laughs> But anyways, um, back to, you know, talking to other people and getting insight and information and just having someone give you a different perspective. Mm -hmm. It also showed like when you talk to someone, they can give you a, an opinion of what your brand looks like on the other side, because you as the performer, you are your pro you are the object. And it's mm -hmm. really hard to look at your stuff and say mm, that can use some improvement. Like, for instance, my shit mm -hmm. was chaotic. You couldn't tell what the fuck I was doing. Was I a model liaison? Was I a model manager? Was I an educator? Was I a, a, a thought pocket? Was I a porn star? What <laughs> damn girl? What do you do? Like, Thanks. and I had, I paid for a consultation and she just was like, you know, you really can't tell what, that's why I changed my name to femdom goon goddess. Cause that's what I'm, that's my thing right now. And so, you know, I had to, centralize and hone in on those things that I want to be known for. And it's mm -hmm. like, I have two Twitter accounts. One's now for de dedicated to sex workers and one's now for fans. Even though I talk to everyone on my main account, I just needed to realize that when I'm on my main page, I'm marketing to fans. It The content that I put, put there needs to be more geared towards driving them in the right direction. And then the other account I can use for coaching and education and sex workers and all that kind of stuff so yeah but it was nice to hear someone say your shit looks chaotic like yeah. what what is your home base yeah what is your objective because <laughs> right now i'm looking at look it looks like someone took a bunch of paints in the rainbow of colors and just splattered it on a canvas and said here this is art that's why i need to set up a consult with you because <laughs> I feel like my shit is chaotic as fuck on my Twitter right now. Um, and I'm trying to get everything more consolidated. So we're, you know, you can tell, differentiate things. So it's hard when you're, when you're trying to work through being a entrepreneur for the first time, mm -hmm. work as adult, a, an adult creator. And you think that you have to be everywhere, but my advice yeah. I'll do a consultation with you, but my, my main piece of advice, and this is to anyone who's watching or listening, narrow it down to three places, one place to cam, one fan club, one clip site, and maybe okay. like a fourth, you know, sexting phone sex or something other. Mm -hmm. What happens when you have all those websites is that you get overwhelmed trying to create content for each of those sites. You get yep. overwhelmed with trying to Put it on clips for sale, mini vids. I want clips, only fans, loyal fans, fans leave, mm -hmm. pop star, just for fans. The the list goes on. Yeah, Netflix, Sex Panther, all these different places, and you dilute the content. If I can find it anywhere, it doesn't make it exclusive. You find that's a good point. It's Carrie like we having t-shirt fun facts, like put it on it, like all right? the facts she be giving. You want to put it on a t-shirt so you can always have it with you. <laughs> but it's true. Like, I feel like you should pick personally. I feel like you should pick one place that is like your mainstay. Mm -hmm. I suggest many vids. I think many vids is a really great, you know, regardless of my personal opinions about the site, I feel like they have a lot of options. They've got a store. They've got the videos. You can sell tangible items like panty socks, so um, pantyhose and stuff like that and connect it mm -hmm. to the content that you created with it. So that makes it all the more valuable. Um, you know, so I feel like I feel like many vids and you can post free videos there, which is something a lot of sites don't offer. So That's you true. can post a vlog about shopping for pantyhose or shopping for panties or what kind of panties mm -hmm. you prefer or going through your panty drawer. Mm -hmm. So you can have free content on many vids that leads to sales towards the paid content. Mm -hmm. But I say all that to say, if you're all over the place, it's like when you look at, if you go look at my pin post on Twitter, it now says fans.queenofbbw.com, fans.queenofbbw.com. Guess where you can find me? Fans.queenofbbw.com. <laughs> it used to have 20 different links on there. Mm -hmm. right? And it's confusing. I have, 
men are simple. The people that I want to spend money with me are typically <laughs> men. And men are simple. Oh my gosh. You confuse them. You need to just let them know where they need to go. Period. Men are simple. You confuse them. They don't like it. It's I like, mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> she's not. She said like how Dory, well, I mean, not thing. Dory, but like how Finding Nemo be like, fish are friends. Not let me ask food. you a question. How many times <laughs> have you gone to the Coca-Cola machine that has like 10,000 different Coca-Cola or oh. soda flavors? And when you go there and there's 150 options, you're like, ooh, yeah. peach Sprite. Then you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Blueberry Sprite. <laughs> then you're like, oh, wait a minute. They have Fanta. No, 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 no. I want strawberry Fanta. And then you, and see then you mix them. flavors. <laughs> Too many options. Too many options. So what happens? Yep. You get lost mm -hmm. trying to find what you want because there's too many options. Mm -hmm. yep. And if you think about your business that way, then you'll realize this is what you're doing to your fans. Mm. If they wow. want to buy your content, they're going to buy it from wherever you have your content. Stop Write a book. It. Stop Write making, a book. Yeah, stop confusing things. And I'm guilty. I have a fucking, I have a platform, I mean, a, a profile everywhere. Now I don't care. If somebody else wants to be platinum <laughs> pussy, they can have that shit. <laughs> if you beat me to it, shh. Have fun with that shit. If you beat me to it. <laughs> I don't even care anymore. Like, I used to do it because I was like, oh, I don't want anybody else to use my name. And although that may be smart, I mm -hmm. also feel like if I go through the sign-up process, especially when you have to show them your ID and put your ID next to your face and you have to submit all this shit, you go through the whole process. And then by the time you've gone through all that, now you feel committed to have to actually use the website. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and then you feel like if I juice. don't, am I losing out on money? Mm hmm. That's exactly how that goes. Yeah. yeah. And then after, after five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sites that you've signed up for, now you're compelled oh, and feel overwhelmed trying to update your content on ten different sites. Right. Yep. You just stuck to one. Now everybody knows where the fuck to go or That's create a true. process like. You know, I tell a lot of girls, if you're going to do a clip site, then you, you know, put your content up there for six months. And then after six months, then you can make it available on OnlyFans. And they're like, mm. oh, but I feel like I'm missing out on that money. And I'm like, how? You're building anticipation. Excuse me. Right. I mean, you know, it's like, how long did we know that some of these movies like Fast and Furious 9? Mm hmm. By them postponing the release, did it, did it make any less money? No, no. It probably made more. It made more. They just announced Little Mermaid, and this uh -huh. movie don't come out until May 2023. And I still have an attitude about that. Because why I got to wait that long? But you're still going to go see it. Right. Opening you're day. You're still going to go see it. Opening day, yep. <laughs> and I don't want to sit next to no kids. I'm going to have me a big bucket of popcorn. I'm going to be like, go ahead. I'm going to go watch it in that day. So while the kids are at school, that's when I'm going to go watch it. <laughs> you, I like having older people in my life to teach me a new lesson. Because you know what? You go while they're at school. You go while the people are at school. Yes. Yeah. No. This is YouTube and Twitch. But we need to wrap things up because we are going live on Instagram. You can find us on Instagram. I heart B-B-W-C-O-M. Ladies, if you'd like to give your Instagrams and Twitters and all that stuff as well, we can wrap this up. It's almost been two hours. Can you believe that? Don't wow. you love it? I do. <laughs> stimulating people having stimulating conversations. But I do <laughs> want to announce before you guys give out your socials, I bought iHeartBBWRadio.com. So Ooh. this is the first official announcement that iHeartBBWRadio.com is going to be a up and coming podcast. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And, and my new educational series where you can buy PDFs, you can um, book me for consultations, theproho.com. Oh my God, I love that. That is perfect. Yes. The pro ho. It can be the productive ho, it can be the yes. professional ho, exactly. whatever kind of ho you want to be. Theproho.com. So, the pro -ho. <laughs> isn't that awesome? Yes. That is. Let me so tell you why I mentioned you. that. I just gave myself more projects. Um, 
because I'm not fucking overwhelmed as it is. But I feel like these are things that I'm passionate about and going forward, you know, I heart BBW radio is going to be something where it's like not just me. It's going to be mm-hmm. a collective of like you ladies and other BBWs that want to get on here and have various topics. And, you know, it's going to be that's dope. amazing. Because- that's really amazing. I'm so happy yeah. for you. I'm I am too. You. That's, that's, that's really huge. I can't wait. All right, Barry, give us your socials and how we can reach you. You can follow me on Instagram at Fairy S Mother. Mother is spelled M U T H A. Follow me. Sorry, I'm sorry. I know you were giving your socials, but I couldn't help it. I feel it. But Mother is spelled M U T H A because I'm not a mother, but I'm a mother, you know, in a nasty way. And then on Twitter, and on Twitter, you can follow me at Fairy Sex Mother. It's just everything spelled normal, but except Mother M U T H A. And on all of my social medias, I have my links in my bio, so you can subscribe and see my podcast and my OnlyFans. Chicken noodle soup with a soda on the side. You can follow me. You can follow me wherever we may go. It's your turn, December. <laughs> well, um, so I can follow you. That's right. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, it's just December Monroe. Um, and then I have uh, all my links in my or a link tree in my bio there for the rest of that where you can find my fansly. And I don't have an Insta yet. I am working on getting that one up, yeah, up though. Awesome. Well, thank Instagram you. Instagram don't like sex me. workers, so make sure everything is beautiful, crispy, and covered. But That's what, what, what was I'm my advice though? Told. My advice was to do that on social media anyway. Because less is more. Less is more. Ultra. That means I need to go ahead and remove my little pick off of Twitter real quick. (laughs) She's like, let me go, let me go scan my feed real quick and take down anything that she goes. Because my Twitter feed, my Instagram is just like boom. Right. (laughs) Isn't it brown chicken brown cow? Yes. It is. Yes. I saw, I was watching a show last night where somebody said that. Like, they what? Said, yeah. Yeah. He said, brown chicken, brown cow. And I was Isn't like, that bow chicka wow wow. It, it is. He's but... like, oh my God. Oh my God. I cannot. It, it I, cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I was utterly she was distraught. Ready to, she was like... ready to be like, I just learned something new. <laughs> anyway. I was really sitting here like, hold the fuck up. She really was. She really was. I want to say thank you to everyone who is watching us live. And if you are watching the replay, we want you to make sure that you subscribe, like, and follow. Comment down below if you have any questions for any of the beautiful ladies of the iHeartBBW.com Curvy BBW Fashion Show, which is at Exotica Expo, October 21st to the 23rd. And um, you follow us, we'll follow you back. Follow us on social media. Our links are somewhere in this box. Somewhere. Not in this box, but in, in that box. <laughs> Not and, in the um, box. Yeah, we are about to go live on Instagram. You can also see us live 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Thursdays right here on YouTube and Twitch. So with that being said, thank you guys. We will see you next week. Same time, same bat channel. And bum, bum, bum. we're going to go get some boom chicken. Bow, wow. I'm <laughs> dead. I'm about to Graham. run right now. <laughs> she was like, I'm out of here. See you guys later. Right.